Well, how y'all are? It's your buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen Gun Range with my next installment on... Hey, I got this old used gun. The old used gun we got today is a dandy. This is a Ruger 1022. Well, you say, well, those aren't old. Well, this one is. Uh, this 1022 says... Sturm Ruger and Company, Inc., Southport, Connecticut, USA, on the barrel, and that's all it says. So we know that this gun was made before 1976. Now, believe it or not, the 1022 came out after the 44 Magnum carbine. The 44 Magnum carbine looks a whole lot like a 1022, but it's a magazine fed like a shotgun. You know, so you come over here like that and you load them in there like you do a shotgun. Uh, the 44 Magnum came out in 1964. And uh, I believe it came out in 1964. And then after that, <coughs> they decided to downsize it, the 44 Magnum, into a 22 caliber carbine. Uh, now, some of the ways that you can tell that this is an older gun is the guns manufactured in 1976, all the Rugers say, made in the 200th year of American Liberty on them, okay? After 1976, after that series of guns, they all started to have warnings on top of the barrel that say, you know, read manufacturer's manual, you know, blah, 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 before using firearm, okay? So... This is a pre-1976 gun. This gun belongs to my cousin Ed, and he's had it for a long time. Now, it had a four-power Weaver scope on it, which we took it off to do this video because we wanted to try and demonstrate how accurate the rifle is with iron sights after all of these years. I think Ed got this gun... I think he got it just about the same time I got my first 1022, which was somewhere along the lines of 77, 78, something like that. So, you know, it's a straight blowback semi-automatic 22 caliber rimfire rifle. It has a pretty nice looking dyed birchwood stock on it. Uh, why do we use birchwood? Well, because birchwood is a little bit cheaper than walnut. Uh, people think that firearms manufacturers use walnut because uh, it looks nice. But when it comes right down to it, they use walnut typically because walnut is easier to machine than oak or hickory. You know, hickory would be even cheaper to use than walnut or birch. They use birch because, well, walnut is kind of expensive because it has so many other applications, typically veneer and so forth. So they're down to birch, which is as easy to machine and mill as walnut is, you know, so they produce these stocks typically in birch and then dye them, stain them walnut color. This one has an aluminum uh, butt plate on it, whereas all of them after about 1988 or 89 had a plastic butt plate. Uh, they omitted the front band on a lot of 1022s, didn't have a front band. Uh, this one has Uncle Mike's sling swivels on it that I think have been applied. Um, and it has old school Uncle Mike's on it, too. They're not the locking type. Um, the sling is, I think he put Bianchi on there. Yeah, Bianchi. And it's just overall a really nice little 1022. So we're going to shoot this guy and see how it actually shoot it takes. I put up a dirty bird target down there at 15 yards. I shouldn't have any problem with it at all. We have a clear side BX-25 magazine, which is hard to get into. An old school 1022 that doesn't have a BX25 style catch on it. Come on, get in there. Get in there. There you go. Now we're in there. 
a Winchester Super X 22 long rifle ammunition. Uh, I'm going to apply the old ear mufflers anyway. If the barrel was a little longer, I probably wouldn't. All right, here we go. It has the uh, Uncle Mike style, Michaels of Oregon style flip leaf rear sight and the standard 1022 front sight with a gold bead. And we're going to shoot it. Thought we were going to shoot it. <laughs> Seems that, uh, the Winchester Super X not working. Of course, it could use cleaning. It probably hasn't been cleaned since 1980. He's a squirrel killer right here, buddy. And some of the new 1022s have automatic bolt hold open device on them. You fire them empty, they automatically hold back. Uh, this is old school guy, so you've got a little lever right here. that you can pull that guy back and push in on that lever and it'll hold the bolt back for you. Lay that gun down there gingerly, it's getting to be an antique. And uh, take her down range and see what she looks like. Walk her down range here. This is how I get my cardio, is walking back and forth to the backstop. Uh, this is a squirrel killer. That's 15 rounds. That's 15 rounds right there with like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bullseyes. So, yeah, after all these years, the performance is still there. Oh, there's a carbine shell. Oh, get that. Don't let it get away. Carbine brass, hard to get. Now, what's one of these guys worth? Well, you know, this gun today, in this condition, with the standard wear areas on it that you normally find on a gun of this age, butt plate, you know, various handling marks on it. And this gun's in really good condition. You know, at 95 or 90% 90 condition, all original and complete, just like it would have been on the Firestone showroom, you know, or Western Auto back in the day. A good operational 1022 is worth $200 anywhere you go. Okay? A new one, an old one, whatever. Uh, I would expect to pay $200 for this gun if I was trying to buy it at retail at a, as a used gun today. Uh, that's about the size of it. Oh, well, there's the serial number. It's 113 prefix. It's a pretty old gun. Uh, Bruger 21022 carbine. Well, that's about the size of it for eight. Hey, I got this old used gun. Pretty cool old 1022. This thing is a squirrel killer. Like, date, share, five, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me a dollar in the Patreon bucket if you want to. And if you don't want to, I'll just keep right on making content for you because I love doing it. Uh, let's continue to be careful during these dangerous times. We've got both the goof to worry about and we've got the goofs to worry about. Uh, join the NRA. You're really going to need them. God bless everybody and we'll see you soon. Bye now.
y'all are just a little short blurb here uh probably put this on the end of a video as extra content people are all the time on youtube with gun hacks yeah things you can do with a gun that aren't shooting related well i know one that i learned a very very long time ago and i'm going to show it to you Yeah, so what you do is, I'm going to lay it there. By the way, those of you that say, well, you're not supposed to drink alcohol on camera. I don't drink alcohol at all. When I take no show of beer taste, I give these. What you're doing here is you're catching the point of the beer bottle cap under the corner of the dust cover right there. Okay? And just boop, pulling it off there. And that's how that works. That's how you can open a bottle of beer with a 1911. Well, <laughs> just, just thought I just thought I'd tell you that. Uh, in case you ever take an ocean that, you know, you're out with a cold case of long necks and the shooting day is done and nobody brought a church key. Yes, I said it, church key. Y'all have a good day. We'll see y'all.